everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Shabbat Show. So great to be back with you again. What an honor to be here. Uh, another incredible week with you. Um, you know, this is a special show because this is a really a show that is beyond just uh, Shabbat now. Now we're entering into a no, another world. We're entering into a world of joy. We're entering the world of Sukkot. And thank you so much for joining us throughout this period of time. We were together for Rosh Hashanah. We were together for Yom Kippur. Now being here together for the next of this incredible series of holidays is so special. And what we're gonna talk about on this show is joy. Where does it come from? How do we get it? Where does happiness rest? We live in a world sometimes where we think that the, the person who consumes the most is the happiness. But then when you get close to that, you realize that's not really the case. The Jewish perspective on happiness is critical. Rabbi Nachman tells us that we have this obligation to be always happy. Can you imagine? Can you imagine that God wants us, he's commanding us to figure out how to live a life. You're happy all the time, ups, downs, good days, bad days. And what I think we're gonna discover throughout this show, and stick with us, so we get really through each piece of this. I think we're gonna discover throughout the show is that the holiday of Sukkot is very much not only a holiday that is we are able to be happy, but it's actually a holiday that is going to give us the tools that we need to be happy, not only for the next few weeks, but as we get into the next few months. We're living in very uncertain times. In many ways, we're living in, if you will, a temporary dwelling. Things feel temporary. Things don't feel like it's going to last this way. Are we going in one direction, another direction? We're trying to plan something. Is is January going to be okay to plan something? Is it February? Is it March? Like no one knows. School's open, school's closed. You have it, you don't have it. Do we have guests? Do we don't have desks? We're living in this temporary world. Everything feels off. Well, there is no greater holiday than Sukkot, which is a holiday where we're commanded to move into a temporary dwelling and figure out a way to stay happy, even though we're not in our houses. We're a little bit more insecure, if you will. That whole metaphor that we go through in Sukkot is the metaphor of our lives. And we're going to delve into it today. So thank you so much for joining us. I want to give a special shout out to uh, Baltimore Eitzheim. If you are here from Baltimore, you are in the right place. If, you, if you're coming based on this flyer, this is the right place for you to be. Um, and the reason is because I was scheduled to speak just for Baltimore Eitz Chaim tonight. And because we have the Shabbat show, it conflicted. And the Baltimore Eitz Chaim guys were so kind, nice, and forgiving. And they said, listen, listen, we'll just come to this show. It's about joy. Let's just do it once. So I want to thank them so much. They have actually been our sponsors since day one, and they've been with us on the Shabbat show ever since. And I want to give a special shout out before I introduce the rabbi um, to the sponsors of the event for the Baltimore It's Chaim group, to Drs. Isaacs and Nawi and Stern from Braces MD and or Braces MD Orthodontics and to Richard Rubin for their sponsorships and their support and their love and their friendship. And now we have on uh, tonight, today a special guest who's going to share with us a few words, the director of Eitz Chaim, Rabbi Zev Pomerantz on. Rabbi, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Charlie. It's great to have you on. And of course, I would love to have been spending more time with you. Hopefully, we'll, we'll get that into the future. And a welcome to you and the entire Baltimore crew for being on with us today. You know, we're talking about happiness and joy. Share with us, if you can, your perspective on it, that maybe something we can take with us as to how to become more connected to that. Um, so just a, a quick thought. Um, you know, on Sukkot, the Torah tells us to be achsamech, only happy, only joyous. And uh, I think, you know, you quoted Rabbi Nachman before about happiness. Rabbi Nachman says that our natural state is really to be happy. And we just kind of have to peel away other things that kind of take that away from us. So going out into the sukkah, roughing it, everyone likes roughing it a little bit, you know, going out in, into the elements and not having to worry about so much uh, of the aesthetics. And, and I think, you know, the more that we can learn how to take away the external things in our lives and coming back to the elemental things of who we are as human beings and just what it is to be alive. And it's just beautiful. Just, you know, you, you see like a small child, like a baby and you just, they don't have anything. They don't worry about anything. They're just happy with what, what they've got. And, you know, I think trying to get back to that beautiful, uh, sweet, um, simple joy is, uh, that, that, that's very meaningful to me. That's what I'm looking forward to do over circus. 
Oh, that's amazing. That's an amazing concept. And I, I think you're absolutely right. This ability to sort of give back to the basics and who we are. Thank you, Rabbi, so much for joining us. Thank you for bringing your incredible group. And I look forward, I hope in the future, to be able to connect to you guys directly. Thank you very much. And what a great story, what a great thought and what a great way to get opened here is this idea of Sukkot coming, bringing us back to something, getting us back to our fundamentals. That's really where the secret of happiness is. We've got a lot to talk about on happiness. This is a big show on it. We've got the show back, Kahoot's back. So for those of you who missed Kahoot last week, we got it back. So get your competitive juices flowing. We've got a great litany of guests. We've got Harvard graduate Rabbi Hanan Anthony Gordon from LA on. We got the hysterical Debbie Hirsch from Jerusalem who will be joining us. We got Rabbi Arye Roy from Rockland County, part of a great group. He's going to be on as well. We got Jamie Geller, of course. Jamie's our constant source of, of inspiration, and we love having her on. We got videos, we got inspiration, we got a lot coming on. And I hope you stick with us all to the end. And if you want to share it with somebody else, please just send them to the shabbatshow.com. Anytime, Shabbatshow.com. We actually have all the other episodes up there as well. So if you see something that you like, you heard an interview that you like, wow, I love that. Or many times we have interviews and we have the full one online. So check out the Shabbatshow.com. You can forward it to somebody that you know that you feel would gain from the show. And of course, it's always a good time for one-on-ones. Why not get wisdom delivered directly to you? One-on-one 97,000 to one-on-one text. No, one-on-one 97,000. Such a great time. We just came out of Yom Kippur. We told God we want to be closer. We want to know more about him. Runs from his religion. We're entering into the who knows what. Like, who doesn't need wisdom right now? And it's available. So check it out. 97,000 one-on-ones. Let's just begin a little bit. I know we got so much to cover. Just a couple, a couple, a couple, a couple. I missed so much this last week. Uh, being able to see everybody and just wish everybody uh, uh, Shabbat Shalom and uh, Chag Sameach. Uh, the first one to Adami, Chag Sameach and Shabbat Shalom. Uh, to Adam Left from Mount Vernon, New York. To Leah Friedman um, in, from California. To Ozzy from Baltimore, Chag Sameach, Shabbat Shalom. Miriam Carr, uh, Shabbat Shalom. Julie Roll, Shabbat Shalom. Kovi Barron, Shabbat Shalom. Loving the Baltimore representation that's coming down over here. Leon Pomerantz from Atlanta, Georgia, Shabbat Shalom, Chag Sameach. Devor Reznitsky, Shabbat Shalom to you. The Seidels from Baltimore, Shabbat Shalom. Oh my gosh, Baltimore is killing them. I expect other cities to start jumping in right now. Um, to John from Oxfordshire, England. How's that? Thank you for watching. Thanks for tuning in, Shabbat Shalom. Uh, Carol Druck from the Upper West Side. The Silvers from Highland Park. Bob in Atlanta. Shabbat Shalom, of course. Surf Tyler, Patriots Rock. Getting ready for your performance today. Uh, Cisendro from Baltimore, uh, the Goldman family from Baltimore, Shabbat Shalom. Okay, we'll get some more a little later. For now, let's check out this incredible video um, from, from H.com entitled Sukkot Living Under the Stars. That is an understatement that it, what an incredibly true video. 
Wow. So inspiring to see people that push past limitations. That's the beginning, I think, of what we're getting at with the holiday of Sukkot. Being able to look at who we are and realizing that we're much deeper than that. Life is so much deeper than our possessions. Life is so much deeper than the things that we have. And as we start to delve into it, we start to look at those possessions very differently. Our first guest is Hanan Anthony. Um, Hanan Anthony Gordon. He was the, he, from his days of a stand-up comic in Johannesburg, South Africa, to organizing a major music concert while, while a student at the Harvard Law School, to representing as a wealth and business manager some of the most prominent athletes, celebrities, and the wealthiest families in this, in this world, Hanan's experiences are certainly unique, and his perspective is as well. You're really going to enjoy. I had a chance to listen to him earlier. Check out this message from Hanan. So folks, the question is, does success uh, equal happiness? In many ways, I think the Almighty gave me a very unique vantage point to respond to that question and in the context of Sukkot specifically. Allow me to explain. There it was uh, in the early 1990s, a few months after graduating uh, from Harvard Law School, the partner walks into my office, not that dissimilar from this office, uh, hands me a manila folder, and I turn the folder over to see the name of the client, what the uh, assignment was, and in black bold, I saw the names Janet Jackson. So one of our clients, Janet Jackson, wanted to do a specific movie based on a, a manuscript, and the whole issue turned around a copyright. So in the course of uh, the assignment, I had to befriend counsel uh, from the other side, a person by the name of John Branker. So John represented one of uh, Janet's brothers, who you might have heard of, Michael Jackson. And so months uh, led into a relationship between myself and, uh, and John. One day John said, Anthony, why don't you come over to the house on a, a specific Sunday? So as I arrived at uh, this palace, you know, with, with a butler, has a butler, parked my car. It was clear to me within minutes that everyone who was an anyone uh, in the music world in the 1990s was in that house. Famous people, tremendously rich people. But here's the problem. As I reversed out of John Branker's house, I felt a pit in my stomach. I don't think I've experienced as many unhappy people under one roof. And these people, my friends, are the richest and the most famous. It was very clear to me at the time that money is certainly not gonna buy happiness and being a household name is not the ticket to happiness either. And I think a large part of the unhappiness that was, that was so clear to me at the time is that these are folks who are connecting happiness purely to the body. Something that is transient, something that is connected to what other people expect, their, their entire self-worth so connected with their net worth. True happiness, my friend, can only be by definition connected to the other part of the human psyche, which is the soul. The soul is eternal, the soul is a part of the Almighty Himself, and true happiness can only be a byproduct of living a meaningful and purposeful life, as opposed to the transience of fame and fortune. In fact, if you look at the Hebrew word for happiness, sameach, simcha, if you look at the phonetic etymology of sameach, the same root means to grow. True happiness comes from setting goals, growing, something that's not transient, but something by definition that is a part of our spiritual connection. Sukkot is coming up, and one of the things that we learn in a sukkah is the schach, the covering of the sukkah, sukkah should be in such a way that you should be able to see the stars. As someone who's been around the Hollywood stars, I can say unequivocally, if you want to be a true star, connect with your soul, 
not your body. We've been given the instructions of how to have a fulfilled, a meaningful, a happy life uh, in the Torah. That's our GPS. Let's focus on that and let's keep our feet on the ground and reach for the stars. Chag Sameach. Chag Sameach as well. And, and this is exactly sort of the, 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 the thinking that we've been doing over here, which is there's got to be another way. There's got to be a deeper place that you, when, as we build out, we realize that's where our happiness lies. Uh, and thank you, Hanan, for that message. To uh, Dana Goldman and the Goldman family from Baltimore, Shabbat Shalom, Chag Sameach. Miriam Daba, Chag Sameach to you. Shira from Baltimore, Chag Sameach. Um, to Mike Skolnick. Mike Skolnick from St. Louis, Chag Sameach. From Tabatya from Baltimore, uh, Chag Sameach. Uh, to Rivka, Chag Sameach to you. Okay, let's get to the next uh, part of our program over here. Listen, we thought that we had, you know, a lot of Baltimoreans here today, so we would uh, give another shout out to that to wonderful group. So in honor of our partners joining us today and speaking about joy, we want to show you a piece written and performed by a local Baltimorean. It's called Anal Movado, and it's the second single from the guitarist, singer, songwriter Yitzi Kapowitz, who, by the way, is also a doctor. So for the Jewish moms, forget it. Does it get better than that? I don't think so. His uh, this song's coming right next to right, this song is a piece of his upcoming debut album called Hayom. Check out this song. <laughs> The sun shines bright each and every day. Give thanks for the miracles I say. Open your eyes, see the world's lights. They're everywhere you turn, hiding in plain sight. Hashem, who I have no kim. Ain't old Melvado. Hashem, who I have no kim.
you so much for that beautiful song coming at you straight from Baltimore. We appreciate that. And it's so true. God runs this world and nothing but him. And the more we think we get that, the more we can connect to something much deeper. I mean, really joy is connected to that concept. There's more out there than just me. I'm taking life sometimes a little bit too seriously. Sometimes I think in life, we take ourselves a drop too seriously. All of us do. We want things to be right. We want things to make sense especially now with what's going on and everyone sort of has their way. And if it's not my way, then it's not right. And sometimes it gets too tight. Well, I had a great conversation earlier this week that I want to share with you. It's with a woman named Debbie Hirsch. Now Debbie Hirsch has has run laughter games workshops internationally for over 10 years. And she's coached tens of thousands of people on how to have more fun. It's awesome. She's attended, she attended the school of performing arts in New York city. She's been in the Hollywood films. She's performed on stage all over the world. Interviewed by Diane Sawyer on Good Morning America in front of over 20 million people about how she lives her daily life. She also worked at Morgan Stanley in Human Resources, and she's been teaching dance, improv, and music for over 30 years. She's a wife and mother of eight adventurous children living in Jerusalem, and she's hysterical and really practical. I really enjoyed my conversation earlier this week with her. Check her out. Check out this interview. I had a chance to sit down with her and get really practical things that we can do immediately with our families to bring a little more of that joy and laughter and humor into our lives. Check this out. So um, one of the games that we like to do, we actually do it around the Shabbat table often, uh, is an exercise called Catch the Good. And really, it's, uh, it's just as it sounds. We all go around and we talk about a time when we actually caught someone doing something good, whether it was that day, that week, that year, it could have been 10 years ago. So what do I mean by that is, is that um, I find that it's so easy for, for myself to catch people doing things wrong or to criticize, of course, as a parent and as a wife, you know, can you just put the socks inside the laundry basket? It's, it's right there, you know, or like kids just stop fighting. It's way easier than saying you're playing so nicely and quietly together. That's much harder. But right. if we can practice and work that muscle and get good at it, I think that would actually add a lot of joy. So for example, last week I was online at the supermarket and I saw this teenager in these ripped clothes and I'm thinking to myself, like everything was ripped, his pants, his shirt, his shoes like couldn't he find anything that wasn't ripped and then I saw that he let an old person with a ton of stuff go right in front of him and I thought to myself wow like who cares if he has ripped clothes that was amazing and so I shared that with the family and and the family whoever wanted to participate shared something nice catching other people doing things right and why is that actually such an important thing um besides the obvious we want to ultimately be able to catch ourselves doing things right and become our biggest fans and our biggest cheerleaders you know we make mistakes we fall down like we get so upset but if we can just rah rah and and keep on cheering ourselves on then there's nothing that we can't do so that's a nice exercise yeah it's great here's another one that yeah, great. Another one I'd like actually you to uh, to try with me. It's a really fun game. Okay. Uh, again, work on that positivity. It's called Fortunately and Unfortunately. So basically, okay. we're going to have a little conversation here, Charlie. Okay. And we're going to begin each sentence with the word fortunately, and then we'll move to unfortunately. And okay. of course, doing that, we'll be able to focus on something good about whatever subject we choose, and also be able to sort of let go, complain a little bit, to sort of you know, let out whatever scene we have, and be real, okay? okay? So let's take the obvious. I thought maybe we would just do corona because that's on everybody's mind. So I had to begin with unfortunately. So let me actually do two, and then you'll do two. Unfortunately, we can't have as many guests this year in Arsica because of corona. Fortunately, that means more food for me. <laughs> okay, how about you? Your turn. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, I can't go to Israel this year because it's locked down and not letting us in. Fortunately, that means I get to spend a lot more time in my house. That was amazing. Okay, so obviously we can keep going back and forth. And what's really more fun is, is that, you know, we have a whole bunch of people playing it and each person alternately 
Um, unfortunately, fortunately. It. And it doesn't even have to be about something deep. Fortunately, I had the day off of work today. Unfortunately, I had to take my son to the dentist. Right. Fortunately, they fit me in, you know, right away. Unfortunately, he had 10 cavities. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, you know, right. the, the, my son lied and said it was because I was such a great cook. Unfortunately, the dentist was at my house and she knew it was a big fat lie. You know, <laughs> It's great because you can't go wrong. It's not like you can have the wrong answer. It's just fun and it's real. And again, it's just so important to be able to work that muscle of positivity because really, Charlie, I mean, we all go downhill. I complain, you know, politics, our situation, the weather, we all do. But what happens when we do that is it just saps us of energy. You got to try this. You, the moment you find hakaratato, something to appreciate, some little small good, we're completely energized. It's like an amazing, amazing thing. Yeah. So I think it's a, a nice way for all of us to sort of work that it. muscle. Yeah. I really. love it. More importantly, I, what you're getting at is so critical because if you're in a situation with other people, without lecturing them, you're teaching them how to be positive. It's not like you're giving them a class on positivity. You're just, this is what we do. And I, I can see my... I can see in my, in my house, like some kids being like, this is so dumb. But if you yeah. just keep on pushing long enough, they'll, they'll yeah, buy it. Exactly. Oh, and they will. My teenagers, of course, is something. Yeah. They haven't even they'll buy the it. game yet. Absolutely. Yeah. But it's true because the moment my child starts uh, complaining about the homework or about these Zoom calls that I have to do with school, and I'll say, fortunately, one day you'll get a job because of this teacher. <laughs> and then he'll say, unfortunately, and then I'll make him do a fortunately. And they'll have to find it, but right. you can we all can do it about anything. We just have to be able to choose to. So Great. I think the last, the last thing I would like to share, and it's really my favorite, I'm actually gonna grab a prop right next to me, uh, which is a water bottle. And the game is called Imagination. So basically, you just grab any prop next to you, a spoon, a shoe, it doesn't matter what, a pack of sugar. And we're gonna use our imagination and we're gonna pretend it's something other than it's not. So for example, <clears throat> welcome ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to invite you to name that tune. La la, oh, I forgot to brush my teeth, one second. Okay, a little brush my hair a little bit. Um, oh, the baby's crying, one second. Shh, shh, shh. It doesn't matter, actually can come up with a hundred things. When we play this game at home, we literally can take one object and come up with about 50 things. And what's amazing, who do you think is of course the best at this game? Just the keep kids. a guess. Kids, they oh, are amazing. Kids. Why? Because they have no blocks. Their imagination is absolutely oh, open. They're amazing. And you cannot help, first of all, say, wow, which is an amazing confidence booster. But I love the game. Why is it important for me? Because I'm able to see other possibilities. You know, we're all in our little comfort zones and, you wow. know, we're like, I'm good here. No, no, no. I don't exercise. I don't know that volunteer stuff. That's not really for me. I'm, I'm good. I'm here. I'm fine. The only problem is it's comfortable, but I'm not going to learn a thing. And the moment I come out of that comfort zone or I stop seeing this as a water bottle, suddenly the whole world is like available to me and all of these possibilities are open and I'm able to see it more. So it's just a great way for, for me to just open up and and just be open to all the amazing, amazing gifts that are really come, you know, coming our way. So oh, I just, I just, just want to encourage everybody once again to just be open. You know, there's all these challenges, our situation. It's just, it's very challenging. I'm not going to make up and say it's wonderful. Smile, be positive. That's crazy. But the truth is, somehow, it's great for us. So as we're in the sukkah and we're like moved outside and it might be a little uncomfortable, a little too cold, a little too hot, it's something different. It's something other than what we're used to. And that's good because that helps us to grow and then we're open to new things. Oh, I so love it. I hope that those are some good, good ideas great, for the Great holidays. ideas and it's, all, it's the right message. It's what we want, it's what we need. It's that the happiness that we're looking for in life is not gonna be handed to us on a silver platter. It's on the inside, we gotta bring it out. Debbie, that was awesome. I thought that was awesome. Uh, I thought she was great. You can go to her website if you want to find out more. It's laughtergamesworkshop.com. Apparently, she's got like dozens and dozens and dozens of these games. You know, one of the things that I think is, is coming out is two different I, concepts that I want to make sure is clear. One is a concept and one is an exercise. There's a concept that when we understand them and, and think about them, they drive us towards a happier life, right? We're not really our possessions. We God runs the world and the more we see that and are connected to that in a deeper way, the more we don't have to control it ourselves.
but there's exercises. And I think what was so critical about what she brought out, and I want to encourage everyone to make up your own, because I, I was really taken by it. I've got, thank God, a, a, a table. And, you know, it's like you, you say some stuff and whatever it is. And by the way, this isn't just applicable if you're sitting in a sukkah. This is everyone in the world. If you're going to be in a sukkah, if you're not going to be in a sukkah, we are all living in a temporary world right now. So regardless of where you are, we are all in the world's sukkah, this sukkot. So even if it's around your dining room table, when we, when we push to create exercises for people to start seeing and flexing the happiness muscle, we make them better people. We make them more grateful people. We make them less serious about everything. And I just think that it was so critical. And the one thing before we move on, I just wanna, what got me with that last one, you know, the last one was the hardest one, the imagination. I can only imagine like taking out a, a bottle and doing it in front of people. And I think to myself as she's saying it, yeah, my little ones would be like all over this. And as you get older, you just become less, you, get, you become a little less imaginative. You become a little bit more constrained. And that's good sometimes, but it's not sometimes. Not only do we have to recognize that the world is bigger than us, and we have this ability to be happy internally, we also have to realize that happiness is a muscle, and it's like any other muscle. If you want to run a marathon, you got to start running. You want to be happy always, ups and downs, well, you got to start exercising that muscle. And with, with the right ideas and the right exercises, you get to a place where Rabbi Nachman and was taking us to, which is, this is what God wants of us. He wants us to be happy. So I thought that was awesome and wonderful. A couple more shout outs. Uh, lots of Baltimore love this week. The Pomerantz family from Baltimore, uh, Shabbat Shalom, Chag Sameach, to Rina Berkovich, uh, to Jeb, Shabbat Shalom to you. To the Novaks from Toronto, Shabbat Shalom. We always get some love from our brothers and sisters up north. You saw Mayor from Passaic, Shabbat Shalom to you. Elisheva Gold, Savannah, Georgia, Shabbat Shalom to you. Hannah Anderson from Scottsdale, Arizona. Fallon Levin from Detroit. Don't you love this? For those who are joining us for the first time, do you not love this? I love this part. I love the part. I love saying Baltimore, Scottsdale, Detroit, Toronto, and Georgia in one sentence together. Jewish people. The one nation, I love it. Ruvain Rezenkoff from Baltimore, Shabbat Shalom to you. Rachel S. from Providence, Rhode Island, Shabbat Shalom to you. Eliza Barron, um, Shabbat Shalom to you. Dan K. from Silver Spring. Uh, okay, let's go to the next video we have here, another great video from H.com. It's called The Three S's of Sukkot, Happiness and the Three S's of Sukkot. H.com delivers again, check this out. <laughs> stuff that I think when we're watching it, we know it's true, but we have to really make sure it's, it's really a part of our lives. Grat gratitude. We got to appreciate the smallest things in the world and really allow us to be, to be bigger, to be more, which allows that growth of happiness to come out. Uh, it's time for Kahoot. 
For those of us that are joining us the first time, this is where your competitive juice starts to flow. For those that are back, welcome back to Kahoot. I know this is a fun time for everybody, my mom included. We try to slow down a little bit the Kahoot just to make sure my mom gets on. 2641798. 2641798. Let the the party begin over here. The Al Shimernis from Baltimore. Shabbat Shalom to you. Uh, Madeline Friedman from and Avi. Maddie and Avi, Shabbat Shalom to you. Keith Yeager from Rockville, Maryland. Shabbat Shalom to you. Adrian Grant from Atlanta. Lori Heifetz from the Upper West Side. Terry Gitlitz from Baltimore. Shabbat Shalom Chag Sameach to all of you. Uh, Shabbat Shalom Chag Sameach from Erica and Roger Matlaw from Southampton. Thanks so much for tuning in. We appreciate that. Um, Shabbat Shalom to Leah Bissett. Shabbat Shalom to Esther, Bort Esther Bortnick. Shabbat Shalom to you. Okay, here we go. Uh, Kahoot's coming and we'll give another minute or two and we'll get rolling with Kahoot. Everyone just start signing in right now. You go to kahoot.it on your app or you can just go to the website and go to Kahoot, put in this number and get ready to roll. Great gifts, just go to projectinspire.com and they will send you some stuff, uh, especially for this period of time. Okay, let's begin. Uh, okay, uh, okay, let's just begin. Let's do this. Okay, here goes. First question, the holiday of Sukkot commemorates all the following except all the following except Jews going through the wilderness after leaving Egypt, protective cloud that accompanied the Jews through the wilderness, the bamboo shoots that they ate while in the wilderness, or the tents the Jews lived in while in the wilderness, right? A lot of wilderness going on over here. Is it leaving Egypt, protective clouds, bamboo shoots, or the tent? All of these except for which one? Edie Goldberg from Baltimore, Shabbat Shalom. Lisa Mervis, Shabbat Shalom. The answer is, right, not the bamboo shoots. You would think that we would find a way to, to celebrate everything that we eat, not in this time. Excellent, we all did very well on this one. Okay, here it goes, how we did. Mervis family, Patriots rock right on, right on the back of it. Sarah, RM, and Gibbs, the leaderboard continues. Let's go to the next question. How do you say tent in Hebrew? Sukkah, Mishkan, Kiosk, or Ohel, how do you say tent in Hebrew? Sukkah, Mishkan, Kiosk, or Ohel? Chag Sameach, Ava Esther Tannenbaum. Chag Sameach to Michael and Rochelle Sullivan from Baltimore. Noah Dubin from Baltimore. To the Silver family, thank you so much. Here comes the answer. The answer is Ohel. A little bit of a trick question with the holiday coming up here. The Ohel, Mervis stays on, Gibbs, RM, Sarah, and Ozzy. I think that's Ozzy from Baltimore. That would be my guess. If it is, identify yourself. We're getting ready for the third question over here. And so we do. The etrog or citron is one of the three core species of citrus fruits. Which of these, which of these is a hybrid fruit? What's a hybrid fruit? Mandarin, orange, pamela, or pepita. I think I should know what a pepita is, but I don't. Michal Dunowitz from Baltimore. Special shout out to the Pomeranz kids. To Eitan Yehuda from Baltimore. Of course, the Bagun and Bolton family. Shabbat Shalom to all you guys. We love you. Thank you for your constant love and support. Here it is. An orange. Which of these is a hybrid fruit? The orange. Whoa. That is a shocker. That's going to definitely mix up our leaderboard over here. Let's see how he did. It didn't. Oh my gosh. Unbelievable. This is the leaderboard as, as it is right now. Okay. Next question. Here we go. At the time when the Holy Temple was standing, 70 bulls were offered on Sukkot. Why? 70 bulls. You see, we have a range. The prophetic connection between Michael Jordan. 23 times three plus one, okay. Merit for the 70 countries of the world. They would have done more, but there was no time or none of the above. Is it an MJ connection? 70 countries of the world. There would have been a lot more, but there was just no time. How many bulls can you actually offer in a day or none of the above? Here we go. Very good, very good. Okay, we split here. 
we're actually bringing offerings for the entire world. Sukkot is really the holiday for the, for the entire world. The Jewish people bring it in. Okay, let's see who won. Let's get to the final scores. Sarah comes in third. Good job, Sarah. Patriots Rock represents yet again. Of course she does. And the winner this week is the Mervis family. The Mervis family. Look at this. Runners up, Velvel and AH. Thank you so much for playing. Congratulations for those that are playing Kahoot. You can email projectinspire.com for your gifts. Our next guest is a great guy who I've spent many, many weekends with. His name is Rabbi Arye Royd. He is the former director of Project Inspire Rockland County and is the founder and director of the organization, the Traveling Hasidim. They, they go around different communities. They light the place up. You got to see him and his incredible crew of awesome people uh, in your community, uh, where he's traveled the world with fellow Hasidim, singing, dancing, and inspiring his way into the hearts of all Jews. Rabbi, welcome to the show. Thank you, Charlie, for having me. Oh, it's great to have you on. Nice to see you here. Usually when I see you, you're dancing, you're singing. There's a group of people around you. It's rocking wherever you go. I'm happy I get to see you in one place, sitting down. I've never seen that before, by the way. I'm not in my element. I don't know how to sit in one place. <laughs> <laughs> I figured. I'm happy we have you right now. And we're talking about happiness, right? And happiness, it's a, if it's a Jewish concept, it's not a simple concept. God's not like, listen, you know what? Better be happy than unhappy. There's got to be something very deep and mystical about the, 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 the effort, the being happy. Can you share with us maybe the Hasidic perspective, what joy is and how it relates to the holiday coming up? Well, so it's an interesting way, how, interesting way how you phrased that question because like the Hasidic perspective on joy is like asking Elon Musk what's his perspective on self-driving cars. You know, the Hasidus <laughs> is <laughs> joy. This is what we are. This is our essence. So it's not our perspective on it. This is what we do all day. And we believe that not just one sh should add simcha and add joy to the mitzvahs we do, but simcha in itself, joy in itself is a mitzvah. And just being happy, <laughs> that itself brings you the closest, it's, 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 the, it's the greatest mitzvah, more than anything else. And, you know, I've always felt that commonly the most, the most famous Jewish word out there is probably oi. I think, Charlie, you may agree with me on that. Oi yeah. is definitely in the top 10, that's for sure. Top 10. Now, what I think is, it's a mistake. The mistake is that we, that was just the first syllable of the oi, which begins a song, like oh yeah, yeah, yeah type of thing. Right, 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 and right. Then, so we, everyone got stuck at the first syllable of the oi, and they think that's what Judaism is. But what it really is, that's just the beginning. Yiddishkeit is all about the singing and the dancing. That's what Yiddishkeit is. That's what Hasidus really taught. That, as I mentioned, besides doing a mitzvah per simcha, do it with simcha. Yeah. Just be happy itself is the greatest mitzvah in itself. So let's talk about that, because that's definitely a new... Uh, element that a lot of people I don't think understand. Um, even myself, I've learned this my whole life. It's it's really important that I can put this into my real emotional awareness, which is it does seem like happiness is the cake, the, the cherry on top. Like it'd be nice to be happy, but like we got so much to do and a lot going on. And and even as, our, as a nation, we're always running to or from something. And what you're getting at, which really is a very core fundamental understanding. And, when, and when, we, when we really think about this, it'll really change our perspective, maybe even on Judaism entirely, which is happiness in itself is a mitzvah. The, 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 the happiness that we bring alone is enough, so to speak. Yeah. So it's, why it's is that? Why, it's simple. why would that be? I, I, would, I would love for my children to always help more at home and sweep the floor and wash the dishes. But if they are just happy kids, that would be the greatest nachos for me. Mm, I see. Not just they are happy kids outside, but they prefer to spend their time in my house more than their friends is also the greatest thing for me as yeah. a parent. 
you know, when we do a mitzvah, every mitzvah we do is nice. We're listening to God, okay? But if we, if we just walk around happy, Hashem put us in this world, and we're just exploring life happily, we show we're appreciative of just who we are. And when we're in Hashem's house and happy, it's the best thing you could do yeah. as to show Hashem this, exactly what you gave me is yeah, exactly what I, what I want. And therefore, it's, when we say mitzvah, mitzvah is a way to connect or it brings nachas for Hashem. So as I said, just like a parent, all they want is the children to be happy. Yeah. So that's all Hashem wants. So every time we do our mitzvah, as I said, it's great. We're listening to God. We're doing, we're doing mitzvahs. We're making him, him, you know, listening to his commandments. It's no, still not the real deal until we just full of joy. And Hashem says, oh, that's all I want. I created a beautiful world, put in people that I want you to enjoy yourself. And if yeah. you enjoy yourself, it was worth creation just for that. You know, it's interesting you say that because I just had the very similar experience. Um, you know, so I just built a sukkah, you know, I, that's what we do now. Like we're constantly building whatever. So I spent, you know, the, today basically building the sukkah in the backyard. And one of my children, it's all good. I love them all. God bless them all. One came out with me. And he was so, I mean, they all helped. But there's helping. And then there's like blown away, whatever it is. I'm your right hand. I'll do everything. Happy about helping. And it, it hit me in the middle of our, our um, building and whatever we were doing. And he wasn't doing anything. Like, what was he doing? He was like just around it did give me the greatest joy because he was happy just to be around me and just to be doing the things that I was doing. And I think the deeper piece is what you're bringing out here, which is so critical is that when we are able to find happiness in every moment, in a way we're showing God, you, you got the world. That, that's your business. Whether I'm doing, I'm sitting on the couch having an ices or whether I'm uh, building a sukkah. Whatever it is I'm doing in life, that's your business. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, God. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to just take everything in life and try to find joy in it. And when I do that, I am just happy to be in it, with it, and with you. Um, and I think that's exactly right. And I think your points are, and I think it's important for us to get it, that happiness is itself a the destination itself. Rabbi, thank you so much for joining us today. A happy holidays to you. Chag Sameach, a good Yantif. Continue bringing light and joy to the world. And I hope and pray that soon you'll be able to go back around and do it your way. Not in this reality we're in. Thank you. Good Yantif all. Chag Sameach, a good Shabbos. Chag Sameach. And thank you so much for joining us. And that's really what we're driving towards, which is this concept that when we're able to be a little bit bigger and realize that God's running this world, it allows us to be present. And when we're present and appreciative and grateful and disconnected from things sometimes that are connecting too much to us, we, it brings out this joy. It's a tremendous difference. Um, I want to give special Shabbat, before we go to, to, to Jamie Geller, I want to give special Shabbat Shalom to some more people that are coming in right now, to Shira Grill, Shabbat Shalom to you. Um, Gabby Keston of Queens, Shabbat Shalom. The Batolsky family from Waterloo, Ontario. Rachel from Providence. Shimon Katz from Baltimore. Of course, Rabbi Hanan Gordon is on right now. He's in Orlando right now, about to start his uh, Sukkot gig. We, we welcome you and thank you for being on our program earlier. Risa and Brian Wolf. Oak Park, Michigan, Shabbat Shalom. Esther Bortnick, Shabbat Shalom to you. Pam and Jim Lakin from Cleveland, Shabbat Shalom to you. And how do you like those Browns, man? Wow, those Browns are doing well. Okay, let's see. Big year this year for the Clevelanders over here. Uh, David Daba, thank you very much from Lakewood. Thank you so much. Shimon Katz from Baltimore. The Burnham family from Baltimore. Uh, Elena Barron from Baltimore. Um, Okay, let's go right now to the one and only, the one of our great partners who we enjoy having on the show all the time. Check out the latest from our one and only, Jamie Geller. Thanks, Charlie, so much. And hello, everybody. And hi, Mom. Hi, Jerry. I know you guys are watching. Mwah. Love you so much. Okay, just a little shout out to the family. This week, we are making stuffed cabbage. And not just because it's going to remind you of your bubby, but because it's actually a classic Sukkot Simchat Torah food. So Simchat Torah is the holiday that ends the sort of Sukkot celebrations. And 
It's been customary to eat rolled and stuffed foods that remind us of rolling the Torah. And so it's gone from Slipchat Torah to like extending to the beginning of Sukkot. So stuffed cabbage is a classic, not just Ashkenazi delight, but classic for this holiday. If you haven't noticed, we are kind of like in the prime time holiday season here. So hopefully you have room and all of your clothes still fit. Um, for one, at least one adorable, cute stuffed cabbage roll. Enjoy this and Shabbat Shalom. And Chag Sameach, Chag Sameach. time i'm telling you i'm thinking wow that's i can really use that right now i get hungry right away jamie the best thank you so much for as always a wonderful recipe for more jamie geller go to jamiegeller.com facebook instagram pinterest youtube twitter tiktok at jamie geller julius by jamie and of course a shout out to her mom and to jerry thanks so much for watching and being part of the show and and really this is where we're driving towards I'm sorry for those who couldn't get to the shout outs for this week. We thank you so much. Just one or two more to Malka in Toronto, Sarah Vax from Baltimore. Thank God so much. Please, please send this in. It gives us, I, I, I got to tell you, I enjoy it so much just being able to wish Shabbat Shalom and Chag Sameach to everybody from those that are tuning in. Thanks so much for tuning in for the first time to those who are here for the first time. We're here every single week, eight o'clock. And I really want to sort of bring a little bit of this together. You know, we're all looking for happiness in this world right? What, whatever you have, if it doesn't come with happiness, what's the point? I was on the phone today with a, a, a good, a, a great holy rabbi, and I was asking him for a blessing for somebody. And the person has everything. I mean, everything. And he said to me something so interesting. He said, yeah, but he doesn't have happiness from it. What's the point? You can have things in life, but if it doesn't give you happiness, if it doesn't give you satisfaction, if it doesn't bring you joy, then is it better to have it? And we live in a world where we are taught and told so often that consume first and you'll feel good later. Just go, 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 go. No one has ever taught happiness in schools, at least I, not the ones that I went to. You're just taught to accomplish. And when you're done accomplishing, they have another level for you to accomplish. So when you're done accomplishing in elementary school, all you get for your efforts is you get to go to high school. And then from high school, you get to go, my path was to college. And then from college, I went to law school. And from law school, I got to the law firms. And from the law firms, I get, you, you climb into the world. And all of us in our own ways are down this world of accomplishing. When they're little, you get them here, then they get bigger, you get them here, then they get bigger. You're constantly in a game of either accomplishing for yourself or for others. And it's awesome and it's wonderful. But it is, it's a consume first mentality, right? It's like eat first and then you'll feel better later. But the Jewish approach is not like that. Trust me, the Jewish approach is for sure in the world of building this world. We're, we're, we're charged by God to be his partners in creation. We're charged by God to go make the world a better place. Materialism is something that we run from. We don't live in monasteries. But, but the essence of Judaism is not the consumption of things. The essence of Judaism is the integ integration of things. It's always making sure that whatever we have, it can be integrated properly. And integration takes place through gratitude and through understanding that it's not just me that did it. And in getting perspective and knowing that there's a time and a place for everything. 
and learning how to take the things that I have and suck out the joy in them. You know, many times in life, the things that bring us the most bitterness really are the things that we have to work on to find the most joy. Because by finding the joy in our challenges, we not only train ourselves to be happier people, we start to find joy in everything in life. And this holiday of Sukkot, which I implore everybody to celebrate in whatever way you can. If you have a Sukkah, wonderful. If you don't have a Sukkah, still have meals. If you can get to a Sukkah even once, even one time, it's worth it because the experience, whether it's the rabbis or neighbors or friends, it doesn't matter. The holiday really is a holiday of as much as possible in our no, new world of, of this virus, getting together with others. But this, the lessons of the Sukkah is, you were once on a mountaintop in Yom Kippur. Just a minute ago, you were standing you know, face to face with God. You were able to shed your materialism. You were able to stand in a fast and pray and, and, and remove the blocks, both physically, spiritually, and be a, an angel. In Yom Kippur, we're considered like angels. And what Sukkot really is, is this bridge to the world. It's the ability to come back down. And when you come back down, you don't come back down to your regular life. You go through a period of time where you say, well, I'm not going to be like that. I'm not an angel. I'm a human being. But I want to be able to still look up and realize that you're on this world. I want to be able to still be inside something that is the shade of God. And I want to get that lesson down so that when I go back into my home, now I can live with that for the rest of the year. When you live with God, anything is possible and bad things will pass and insecurity and uncertainty becomes a little bit more secure and a little bit more certain because something else and someone else is running the world. You are free to be present. And when you're present, you are free to find joy. Wherever we are, the more present we're in it, the more we let go of the things that we can't control, the more we are appreciative and the more we are connected to the deep source, then the more we have the ability to find joy. Because joy and happiness don't come to us. We search for it. That's the greatest accomplishment. The, con the consumption model that many of us grew up in could be correct if what we're consuming is the joy within things, not the thing itself. And there's no greater time than right this second. So for those that are joining us now, thank you so much for being a part of this. And from me and mine to you and yours, I want to wish you an incredible holiday. Wherever you are, an incredible holiday in Shabbat. This is the season now of joy. And may we become searchers of joy. May we not wait for it to come to us. Those days are over now. We have to go out and get it. We have to go ahead and find it. We got to look at our spouses and our children and our families and ourselves and go find ways to be happier, to be more appreciative, to be more grateful. And with that, we will find ways to live in joy, which is the mitzvah in itself. Wherever you are, you can do this mitzvah. You can look and search for joy. So for me and mine to you and yours, I want to wish you a Chag Sameach and a Shabbat Shalom. May this be a time filled with joy. And I hope and pray that we get to enjoy the company of each other in the huge Sukkah in Jerusalem, hopefully soon. But if not, look forward to seeing you again next week. Incredible, incredible holiday. And may we all live lives of true happiness. Father.